video review, actually a series review. I'm trying to be as quiet as I can because Dad's already asleep in the next room and <laughs> actually coloring earlier and he says, You know, you could be you could be resting already and I said, Yeah, I know, but I'm gonna do a review, so here it goes. I recently watched the latest episode of <coughs> OUAT, which was called Bleeding Through, and this particular episode featured Cora's past, and what's interesting about OUAT in and of itself, in its um, construction and development, is that good and evil are not always black and white, and we can definitely say this with Cora. I always had issues with even having any sympathy towards her, but now that I see what she had been through and how she had been deceived and lied to and manipulated and basically played for the fool and uh, her reputation was ruined, it's no wonder she was vindictive and vengeful and had a vendetta. <coughs> but all in all, uh, Mary Margaret did what she thought was right and in the end, she and Regina have a stronger relationship than ever, and it's, although it is very labyrinthine, labyrinthine it um, serves its purpose quite well. Um, I felt sorry for Rumpel, I really did, and I was hoping that he would be able to get the dagger that Zelina has that controls him. No such luck. <laughs> um, the reason that she's putting all those elements together is because it's a time spell that can uh, give her the ability to go back into time and make her the um, <clears throat> make her the princess. Well, make her actually, yeah, make make her not be the one that was given up and left for left for dead, basically. I can understand why she would be so distraught over that and why she would want to enact her vengeance on everybody who was responsible, mainly mainly her, mo her own mother. Um, it's very interesting to see the past and how everything's brought together and if, if these things were all changed then, of course, Snow wouldn't exist, Emma wouldn't exist, Regina would probably not even exist. Um, the one thing that they are needing to tie all these things together is Mary Margaret's, or Snow's, uh, child. And, um, I'm really interested in seeing what will happen in the next episode. <laughs> So we just have to wait to see what will occur. It just gets more and more multi-layered as um, we learn more about the different characters. And I think it's really sensational, honestly. And I actually wanted to talk about um, a little bit of a disappointment. Um, I won't be able to watch uh, Cartoon Network anymore because they won't allow recording for some odd reason. And I had really been enjoying episodes of Blue Exorcist, which I think is uh, a remarkable show. And it's it's a tremendous anime. It's right along the lines of um, Full Metal Alchemist. It, it's in the same vein. It, it's It's a different kind of show, but it's dealing with the supernatural and the paranormal and I absolutely adore it. <laughs> Plus there's a lot of spiritual text to it. It, it reminds me of Kakashi and I love Kakashi. I love Kakashi and Yu Yu Hakusho and all shows like that and this has that same kind of vibe to it. And if I were to cosplay a character from that particular series, it would be Shiami. I absolutely adore her. She's just so cute, and um, I'm nothing like Shiami. I'm outgoing. I, I can be shy, but uh, uh, 
she's just uh, she knows a lot about pharmaceuticals well, in their herbal context and we have that in common I thought yeah I'm, I'm definitely like she and me except I'm not clumsy like she is she's very clumsy Uh, I really like Space Dandy. I've been enjoying that. And Rick and Morty, which I won't be able to watch anymore. And Clarence, I've been... I know a lot of people say, I actually, I actually enjoy it. I think it's really quite funny. Um, of course, I won't be able to watch um, Steven Universe, which I've become very attached to. I think my favorite character in that show is Garnet. I, Garnet's awesome. She just kicks butt and takes names, and she's very stoic and doesn't show emotion very clearly. And it, it, she's she's got a childlike nature to herself, in a different kind of way um, than Amethyst. Amethyst is just a big kid, and Pearl's kind of like uh, the doting mother, the mother hen, um, and all the characters have to have to work together in order to defeat these strange un unusual creatures and of course I also like uh, Black Lagoon but I've ordered it and I won't be able to see the rest of it I won't be able to see the rest of One Piece dang it I really wanted to know what happened uh, the last episode that I saw um, Tom died and uh, it just it, it literally ripped my heart out I, it just, I, I almost cried I actually did cry I, I did cry when I see things like that and well, I knew that he was. I knew that he would because of the title of the episode. It's called "The Death of the Legendary Man: The Day the Sea Train Cried." And I thought, yeah, Tom's gonna die. And I thought, ah, uh, no, poor Iceberg, poor Frankie. They have no father anymore. And it was just a very sad episode. And then it brought us up to date with why Frankie's stronghold was being attacked. And ah, uh, it was just getting good. I thought, why did you? stop letting me record all of your episodes, Cartoon Network, and, and I won't be able to watch anything. I mean, I won't be able to watch Adventure Time. I won't be able to watch any of the shows that I enjoy watching. It's just, it really sucks, but... <sighs> well, at least I have The Hub. Um, the Hub is a lot better than Cartoon Network anyway, so it's no great loss, and I've been um, watching... Let's see, Viking season two, which is mediocre at best. It, it's well written, but I mean, it's not so well written as Game of Thrones, and Game of Thrones is far superior. At least you learn a little bit about the Vikings themselves, and yeah, it's a kind of what if. Uh, I've been enjoying some other programs. Of course, I won't be able to watch History anymore and BBC. Now, I'm really ticked off about this because I'm only going to be able to watch one episode of the new season of Orphan Black. So, I'm sorry ahead of time because some stupid thing is um, making it unavailable for me to record future episodes of Orphan Black. I... <laughs> That may mean I, I'll miss Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, well. I've got old episodes, so... I'll be watching other things. Maybe I'll be watching Torchwood instead, since I won't be able to watch Doctor Who. I won't be able to see Peter Capaldi in action. Rats. Blast. But, uh... There'll be other, epi there'll be, uh, other shows that I will be watching and reviewing. But, uh, that's my update, other than Dad was able to come home on Monday, Thursday, which I don't know if you've been, uh, keeping up to date with my Facebook, but he came home on Monday, Thursday. Um, he has a slight hemoglobin deficiency, and he has a slight iron deficiency. He has, um, a little bit of upper GI bleeding, which they said it was an adenoma, which actually adenomas are very common. They're most frequently found in colonoscopies. They are benign. Uh, in six months' time, he will undergo a colonoscopy. I feel for my father. I really do. I think, oh, I had to go for this cathecta thing, but, you know, he has to. So, it's um, something that he absolutely is needing to have done. This is 
more than likely later on in life that something like that could become cancerous. So then you could get more adenomas. So uh, get it out of there. So I'll keep you updated on that. Um, I'm still waiting to hear from Pearson View. It's going to take three freaking weeks to process my application, which I think is a bunch of malarkey. But anyhow, I will be able to take my examination, get that out of the way. And May the 16th, I will be honored for my my grades. And then my dad told me that one of my idols is going to be at U of, N U of I, which is my alma mater. He's going to be there on the 22nd of October. That would be Neil deGrace Tyson. I saw him on the um, the inner cover of Portico, which is the magazine that U and he produces. And when I saw it, I almost freaked out. I thought, ah, here he is. This is my hero. Ah, he's going to be at U and he. Yeah, I'm freaking out about it. <laughs> I never get excited about anything, but it's Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just uh, I'm so I'm enamored of him. I just think he's amazing. He's just a fantastic person, and I can't wait. I really want to hear him speak. Um, I'm hoping that he'll talk about multiverses and oh that would just make my dreams come true and anything in physics I don't care just just hearing him speak what it's, it's gonna be my ultimate geek fantasy so <laughs> um, I'm just amazed that he's going to be there it's just I don't know how this happened but all my dreams are coming true it's just amazing um, I will keep you updated on that <laughs> I actually tried to get that day off uh, beforehand, so we'll see what happens. But other than that, that's all I have going on. I'm planning on seeing Transcendence tomorrow, and I'm going to do a review of that. So until next time, blessings, live long and prosper, and ciao, tutti.